and another trip into the box that is not quite never ending but is still lasting us quite a while thank you again to sasami chan for generously sending these to be fodder for ember's reading room and today we are back to little golden books Ooh, and back to disney donald oh. duck and the one bear that's a very nice cover a turnabout tale. Donald Duck and the One Bear. Goldilocks and the Three Bears? Hmm. Calling it right now. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. Yes, it's another golden book. Yes, it's another licensed book. Yes, it's another donated book. It's Walt Disney's Donald Duck and the One Bear. A turnabout tale. Interesting. And that pizza commits lots of internet sins. Apparently, it's bad to have pineapple on a pizza on the internet. It also has sardines. Anchovies. And you shouldn't have anchovies and pineapple on the same pizza. And I used to like Hawaiian pizza before I got more sensitive to how sweet pineapple tastes. Yeah, I'm okay with pineapple on pizza. I also think it goes well with Canadian bacon, which is basically just ham slices. Uh, which would be a Hawaiian pizza. Oh, yeah. Correct. Okay. No artist or illustrator listed, because, of course, it's Disney. So I guess I'm just going to label this one by Disney. <laughs> oh, and it's the fifth printing as of 1981. Wow. Good year, 1981. Donald Duck was taking something out of the oven when his three nephews walked into the kitchen. Those pizzas sure look good, said Huey. Two of them do anyways, added Dewey. What's that other one? asked Louie, wrinkling his nose. Uh, somebody's out of color. That or he was a different color back then. Yeah, because uh, Dewey is normally in blue and here we have him in yellow. Which is a very odd choice because the kitchen is mostly yellow. Yeah, he's, he's bright yellow. The same color as the kitchen. Mm-hmm. And it's not like they're trying to save on blue because Donald's still in blue. Yeah, and the art is very clean. This is a very nice printing. Okay, you were actually right. Oh, my God. That's my personal favorite, said Donald as he set the pizzas on the table. Pineapple and sardines. I corrected you to anchovies, and it is actually sardines. I am right for once. Uh, so, hell just froze over, right? <laughs> yes. And there's a pizza with pepperoni on it for Daisy, and one with sausage for you boys. Yummy, chorused the boys, reaching for their pizza. Don't touch, scolded Donald. Let me cut them. We'll go get Daisy first, and the pizzas will be just cool enough to eat when we get back. So there's how it's a turnabout tale. Apparently. It's Goldilocks. Oh. Oh, I get it now. No sooner had they left than a shaggy brown bear came down the street. When he got to Donald's house, he stopped. He sniffed and sniffed. Something smelled good. The bear lumbered up the sidewalk to the kitchen window and looked in. When he saw the pizzas sitting on the table, he gave a happy little growl and crawled right through the open window. Which is very much a thing that happens with bears. Sometimes even if the window isn't open. Though I'd like to know why the bear seems to have a collar on. Yeah, that's the only question I have. And I don't know if I've told this story before, but I lived in an area where bears were a common thing. And, well, there was this one night where we heard some loud noises from our back porch. We go out to find a bear has removed our back window to get to a large tub of Crisco we had. When I say removed the back window, nothing was broken. The bear just pulled the window out of its socket and put it down next to it and then crawled inside and got the Crisco. So we had a very polite bear. The bear tried to pick up a piece of Daisy's pepperoni pizza, but it was too hot. He picked up a piece of the boy's sausage pizza and took a bite. But it was too cold. Then he tried Donald's pineapple and sardine pizza, and it was just right. He ate one piece after another until it was all gone. Hmm. 
He just hit me. A, a pineapple and sardine thing would probably be a pretty good taste for a duck. Because they eat fish, and they also eat bugs, and pineapple they might like. With his tummy full of pizza, the bear looked around for a place to rest. He wandered into the living room and sat down on the couch where Huey, Dewey, and Louie always watched TV. The couch was too soft. Then he tried the chair where Daisy sat when she came to visit. He didn't sit there very long. Daisy had left her knitting, with the needles in it. And he bent and broke one. Yeah, which sucks, because you need both. That's the thing with knitting. At last, he sat down in Donald's favorite rocker. That was just right. He rocked and he rocked harder and he rocked harder still until crash! The chair suddenly tipped over backward and spilled the bear onto the floor. Nice picture of the boys there in the background. Still with yep. the yellow. Yep, and at least they're consistent in the book for his color. Even on to the next page. It must have been a classic color. I vaguely remember something about this. Hmm. Grumbling to himself, the bear lumbered upstairs. He wanted to sleep on something that didn't move. So first he tried Huey's bed, but it was too small. Then he tried stretching across from Louie's bed to Dewey's, but he sagged in the middle. Finally, he found Donald's bed, and that was just right. He snuggled down into the covers and fell fast asleep. Hmm. Apparently, Donald and this bear have a lot in common. Apparently. When Donald, Daisy, and the boys came back, Donald proudly pointed to the pizzas, but Daisy could only cry. Somebody's been trying to eat my pizza. Somebody's been eating our pizza, exclaimed the boys. Look, there's a bite out of this piece. Hey, shouted Donald. Somebody's been eating my pizza and has eaten it all up. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. He stormed off to the living room with Daisy and the boys following nervously. I can't believe there are two people in the world who like pineapple and sardine pizza, Dewey whispered to his brothers. Then he stopped and pointed. Look! Huey and Louie were amazed. Somebody's been sitting on our couch, said Huey, and squashed the cushions, added Louie. Somebody's been sitting in my chair, said Daisy, holding up a broken knitting needle. My rocker, yelled Donald. Somebody sat in my rocker and broke it to pieces. Daisy and the boys tried to tell Donald that his chair was just tipped over, not broken, but he was too angry to listen. He charged up the stairs two at a time. Daisy and the boys tagged along. Hey, shouted Huey, pausing in the doorway of the boys' room. Somebody's been sleeping in my bed. And my bed, added Dewey. Mine too, said Louie. Help, screamed Donald from his room. The boys ran down the hall and found Donald hiding behind the dresser. Here's the culprit, Daisy told the boys laughing. A bear, said Huey. He's cute, added Dewey. Can we keep him, Uncle Donald? asked Louie. Well, he already has a collar. Donald poked his head out from behind the dresser. Seeing the boys and Daisy standing nearby, and the bear still sleeping soundly, he tried to act brave. Certainly n not, he said. We have to wake the bear and get him downstairs and out of the house right away, and... Oh. Here we go. The doorbell rang. I'll get it, Donald shouted, leaping out of the room. A worried-looking little man stood on the porch. I'm sorry to bother you, but I don't know what's happened to my pizza. We've been wondering that ourselves, Donald interrupted. Mine got all eaten up and... No, 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 the man said frantically. Pizza is my pet bear. You see, I own Charlie's Pizza, and our slogan is, When you're as hungry as a bear, eat Charlie's Pizza. Get it? I get it, said Donald. But I'd be happier if you'd get your bear. He's upstairs. The man ran upstairs yelling, Pizza! Pizza! The bear woke up when he heard the man's voice and greeted him affectionately. Charlie snapped a leash to Pizza's collar, and the bear followed him down the stairs and out the door. Whew, breathed Donald. I'm glad that's over. It was kind of exciting, though, said Huey. Let's eat, said Dewey. Yuck, yeah, cold pizza, said Louie. It's oh, still pizza. What's wrong with you? There's people I know who will stick a full pizza in their refrigerator because they prefer it cold. Just then, the doorbell rang again. It was Charlie, holding three big boxes. I want to give you this reward for finding my bear. Three piping hot extra-large pizzas. I'm guessing you're thinking what I'm thinking. 
Hooray, the boys cheered. How very kind, said Daisy. I hope you like them, Charlie added. They're pizza's favorite. Pineapple and sardine. Thanks again for finding them. Also, three pizzas does not equate a thank you for finding your bear that ate our pizza and wrecked our stuff. And Huey, Dewey, Louie, and Daisy stared glumly at the pizzas, but Donald grinned from ear to ear. I licked that bear from the moment I saw him, he said. Now let's eat. Because that's one of those things. When you find out that you have something in common with someone, you go, oh, this person is like me. And that affinity causes you to think positively of them. It's one of the things a mentalist uses to get to know you. They ask what your favorite pizza is. You say, and they go, oh, that's mine too. Or you sneakily figure out what their favorite thing is, and you go, oh, I, really, I feel like this right now. And they go, yeah, you know, that does sound really good. Huh, I only noticed a couple of printing errors in this book. There's the page where Donald's hiding behind the dresser. See how fuzzy it is? Yeah, it's like the printer kind of double printed, and then you compare it to this page. See how sharp it is? Yeah, so now it's more of a publishing printer error, but other production than that, error. But other than that, like that's a very crisp book. And it's very well drawn, and yeah, fun, you know, a turnabout tale. Since they labeled it like that, I wonder if Golden Books had a whole line. Hmm. A reverse of classic fairy tales. Mm-hmm. I've never had sardines. I'm not big on fish to begin with, and fish that you s apparently are supposed to eat whole... No, no. I heard they're very salty. That's why I, I've kind of stayed away from them. I'm not big on salts. And I'm not big on the smell of fish. Fun book. Nicely illustrated. Pizza makes a nice substitute for porridge, because who really eats porridge nowadays? I did at one point. Really, porridge and not oatmeal or cream of wheat or cream of rice? I don't think I've had the cream of rice. I might have had the cream of rice, but I've had, I've had all of them, pretty much. I've had porridge, I've had oatmeal. I'm like, specifically what goes into porridge and what makes it porridge as opposed to something like oatmeal or cream of wheat? Hmm. It was never that important when reading Goldilocks. No, it's kind of like finding out what curds and whey is. Yeah, one of those things of... It wasn't that important for reading it. Nope. So this has been Walt Disney's Donald Duck and the One Bear, a turnabout tale. Because it had to be the one bear, because normally it's Goldilocks and the three bears. Ah, th this, this man gets it. Finally, okay, so 81 was the fifth printing. When was the first printing, I wonder? Ah, 78. Hmm. So in just the span of a couple years, they were up to five printings wonder how large of a run they did. Well, I'm guessing it sold out each time. That's usually why you reprint things, is because it's sold out, and you're like, oh, people still want it. I can recover the publishing costs of printing more of these because people will buy it. It still bugs me that books go out of print. It just, I understand economically, but it just doesn't seem right. It's a book. It's been created. Why would it disappear? Yeah, time, usually. That's the nice thing about digital books. You can make as many copies of them as you want, as long as they're not DRM ridden. Cough, Amazon cough. <laughs> so, thanks again for listening. And since this is a little golden book, I bet it's still in print, but I also bet it's not going at the cover price from 1981. What were they going for nowadays? Five bucks. On one of the older books, I did a inflation calculator, and that's about the price they cost. Back then, it just... When you look at it now, you're like, oh, wow, 89 cents. That's like nothing. But you trace back the timeline, and yeah, 89 cents was worth more back then. It's kind of like the difference between being a kid and an adult. When you're a kid, 20 bucks seems like nothing, especially since you're not the one spending it. And then when you're an adult, 99 cents, hmm. Do I really want this song? <laughs> so anyways, there should be a link there. We have other Disney books, so this will be in the Disney playlist, along with the license playlist, along with the master playlist, just in case you're looking for some more related content. And Ebates, because, you know, I can. I mean, come on, cash back for shopping. For shopping. That you don't even have to do in store. They do have in store options if you link a credit card, but cash back for shopping on the internet on your phone. 
or tablet or laptop, whatever internet-enabled device you use. Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content analysis channel or anything else we happen to put up, like Ember's Emporium of Everything, where I also shell Ebates along with a lot of other things. Thanks again for listening.